The Golden State Warriors are in a very different spot this year than they were last year, coming off of winning the title a year ago and now losing in the second round, and they have a ton of questions. Everything that's happened between winning the title and now changes changes everything for the future of this Warriors roster. Really quickly, though, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Prize Picks. And right now, Prize Picks, they have some amazing promos running. You can get a 100% deposit match up to $100, as always, when you use code Sporting, and you click that link in the description. And also, they have the Millionaire promotion running right now through the entirety of the postseason. And all you have to do for this promotion is play prize picks like normally. I'm gonna explain that here a little bit later and make sure that you opt in when you play. The way that it works is they're gonna select one entry every single day of the postseason. And if you get a certain number of picks correct, you have an opportunity to win up to a million dollars. Again, make sure to opt into that promo every single time that you play prize picks like normally. Now, if you've never played prize picks before, basically it is you against the numbers. You can see all these numbers behind me. You pick between two and six of these. And if you're correct, you win some cash. You can see the incredible amount of options that they have you know, depending on the game, depending on what the matchup is, you can really get into what you think could happen. You select more or less for each of these numbers. The more you get correct, the more cash you win. And again, if you opt into the millionaire promotion, you have an opportunity to win up to a million dollars. And again, if you want to get started, you have that opportunity to click the link in the description or use code sporting for a 100% deposit match up to $100. Prize picks is available in over 30 states. You must be 19 and older to play and age restrictions vary by state. Please play responsibly. Hope you guys have fun with prize picks this postseason. And thank you again to prize picks for sponsoring this video. First and foremost, I feel like you need to begin this conversation with Golden State by talking about the money, not just the expense of the roster, but what it's going to mean moving forward. Because Golden State has an unbelievable amount of money invested in this team, as well as in the luxury tax. And it's just, it's almost gotten to the point where it's just untenable. There's no way that you can continue to have Steph and Clay and Wiggins and Draymond and Poole and all these guys all on the same roster, all making as much money as they are. And you need to start making some decisions. Now, that doesn't just mean, okay, we don't really want to pay this much in luxury tax anymore for a team that's not making the finals consistently, but it also means that with the new CBA coming in here in a, in a year or two, it's going to become that much more difficult to build a competent roster when you have as much money invested as the Warriors look like they're going to over the next couple of seasons. Now, having said that, after they lost, a lot of the comments that came out from the players, coaches, things like that, were centered around this idea that they were going to run it back. They're going to bring back Draymond. They're going to try and get an extension for Clay. Of course, Steph is still going to be there, and they're are going to run it back. But I find it very hard to believe that amongst all five of those players, Steph, Clay, Draymond, Wiggins, Poole, I find it very hard to believe that they can look at the way this team performed this year, especially on the road, especially in the postseason, and say, you know what? Let's run it back. Let's have all five of these guys still on the roster next season. I think some decisions absolutely need to be made. And those decisions include, do we want to continue to re-sign Clay Thompson? He's been unbelievable for our team over the years. He's getting a little bit older, had some rough moments in the postseason it feels like we need to play him a lot but maybe he isn't as effective as someone else uh, you know that maybe we can move up to that spot does it make sense financially to continue to pay clay 40 million dollars a year because that's what he's going to want he's going to want the i'm the cornerstone of the franchise one of them alongside steph and draymond that has put together one of the most successful eight-year runs that we've seen in the history of the league he's going to want that kind of money i don't know that it makes sense for golden state to do that then you bring it uh, around to draymond as well who is still unbelievable defensively really helps them a lot offensively in terms of the way that he moves the ball, but is, is not a real threat at the rim or in terms of, uh, of shooting the ball. And of course, caused all kinds of issues within the team this year as well when it relates to Jordan Poole and all those different things. And now, you know, you get to the Jordan Poole of it all. And I think if you had to pick one player at this point that it feels like the Warriors are going to move on from and should move on from, it seems like Jordan Poole is that guy. I've said this before. I don't think if the, Dra I think if the Draymond Jordan Poole incident never happens last off season, I don't think they sign him to the extension that they did. It's either less money or they just wait wait. There was no reason for them to give him the extension at the time coming off of what was a really good breakout season for him. Because once we got into the postseason, into the finals, Jordan Poole was playing like 16 minutes a game, 20 minutes a game. And this, this is a guy that's making, you know, 25, 30 million dollars a year. And then into the postseason this year as well, the same kind of thing happened when the series got a little bit more difficult, when they needed to shrink down the rotations more and more and more. Jordan Poole was not on the floor and or he was committing really bad fouls to make sure that he wasn't on the floor. And it, at a certain point, when you're spending as much money as the Warriors are, and Steph is as critical to your team as he 
is. Wiggins, when he's, you know, on the floor and has it together, is as critical as he is to your team. Same with Draymond and kind of same with Clay. You have to pick one of the guys, and I think the guy is going to be Poole. I, I don't I don't like Jordan Poole that much. I don't think he's very good. I don't think that... I think we all kind of overreacted a little bit to the breakout year that he had the year before. Oh, is this guy the third Splash Brother? I, it also doesn't really seem like these guys like him that much or like playing with him that much. There's a lot of weird vibes around Jordan Poole. But I also think that there are going to be teams around the league that are going to be interested in just taking a flyer on, on the talent. Like, yes, it's a big contract, but Golden State's probably not going to require too much in exchange for him. And it's going to look similar to like what we've seen with Russell Westbrook trades in the past, where it's like, this is a massive salary. Maybe we attach a sweetener to it and we get, you know, two or three players back in exchange for Jordan Poole. It's kind of similar to, to what the Suns are facing with Chris Paul and potentially DeAndre Ayton as well. This guy's expensive. We know that he is. Can we break him up into a couple of other pieces that really help us in our rotation? Because there are playoff series in which Jordan Poole is going to play between 10 to 15 minutes a game, as we saw in the finals last year, as well as throughout this postseason. And you just can't justify paying that guy that much money when he's no when he's really not going to be on the floor, be that consequential when it truly matters most, no matter how exciting he is as an offensive player at times. I think that's the guy on the outside looking in for Golden State. Having said all those things, it sounds doom and gloom, right? It sounds really bad. Oh my gosh, the vibes are off. Draymond might leave. I still think this is a really good team. And if they retain Draymond, Wiggins, Clay, and Steph are all still there. They figure out the Clay extension stuff. If they get rid of Poole and they add a couple of other smaller pieces and things like that, as they've always kind of managed to do, I do still think that they're still a really difficult team to defeat, uh, you know, in a postseason series. I think the Lakers team that they ran up against is just playing incredibly well. And it was just, it was a really tough matchup for them in terms of the size of that series. And I wouldn't necessarily start thinking that that everything's going to start falling apart there in Golden State. But I do think that they have some really, really big decisions to make. And it's going to be something to keep an eye on throughout the entirety of the offseason, because right now it feels like Clay's probably going to be back. Draymond's probably going to be back. But you never really know. I mean, the, the Clay extension stuff could go really, really poorly as Golden State looks at this situation and realizes just how much money they've been spending. And the Draymond thing, like there are going to be teams interested in him. Like the, the I used to think that if Draymond was going to return to Golden State, they might be able to get him for like, you know, 20 million a year over three years. And that would be it. But there's going to be other teams like Detroit, Houston and San Antonio potentially that have cap space that are going to pitch to him. Hey, you can get out of that situation in Golden State where you've had so much success. You can kind of stretch your legs a little bit more over here. You can be the mentor for the young guys. You can play alongside Victor Weminyama. You can play alongside the young guys in Houston. You can play back home, you know, in Michigan, in Detroit. You can do all these things. And those things might start to sound really, really interesting if he's getting paid between seven to $10 million more per season than what Golden State is comfortable offering him. And at the end of the day, I just think there are going to be some, some changes made here. I don't think there's any way you just completely run back the roster and say, ah, we'll figure it out. I, I, I really just don't think that's realistic when you're spending as much money as they are. When you're spending this much money, ownership, the GMs, the players, they're all expecting that you're going to be a championship contender. And who knows what would have happened if the Warriors got a better matchup and didn't end up having to play the Lakers in the second round. But I think it's pretty clear that they weren't on like the Nuggets level. They might not have even been on the same level as a team like Phoenix, depending on, you know, how that matchup would have worked out. And at that point, when you're spending that much money and you're not like a guaranteed contender, some changes are going to be made. I think Steph's still going to be there. More than likely, they're going to figure out the clay thing and probably Draymond as well. Wiggins is under contract. I think Poole's gone. I think they're going to trade pool, try and get a couple of other pieces, maybe even just dump the money and keep that core together for at least one to two more seasons. Beyond that, once guys start to get really, really old, I really have no idea what the future looks like outside of, of course, Steph, who's unbelievable, still one of the best players in the entire league. Apart from that, I really don't know where they go beyond these next couple of seasons. Now, having said all those things, I I'm not expecting anything incredibly dramatic this offseason, but you never really know in the NBA. You never really know if Draymond's going to realize, you know what, I'd like to be somewhere else. I'd really would just like to make more money. And then Clay wants 40 million a year. The Warriors are like, we're not doing that either. Maybe Clay's elsewhere. Maybe Draymond's elsewhere. Maybe next year we're watching Steph Wiggins and Jordan Poole running around and doing stuff. I'm not sure. Y you never really know what's going to happen offseason, offseason. I think the way the CBA is changing, the lack of cap space for most good teams this summer, and the way that the assets just kind of work in the league right now, we've got all these teams with multiple firsts. You've got teams that owe firsts. It, it, it's a very complicated situation. I think whenever things are that complicated, you can never really anticipate what exactly is going to happen.